the water. Ooh, stir. Whoopsie, I didn't stir. Hello, I'm glad that you could join me for another adventure. You and I are heading up there. We are going up to the top of this mountain to camp up by a mountain lake. So where we're going is up through here, up, 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 all the way to where you see that, I call it an alpine area, so where you can see the scree and I guess you could say grassy slopes up above the bush line. <laughs> Hello. Yep, it's straight uphill, that's for sure. I'm going to come back and get you. This is why it takes me twice as long to get anywhere. I'm always leaving you behind. I don't know about you guys when you're walking if you um, do lots of thinking but I, I do lots and lots of thinking when I'm walking. It's such a great space. You don't have anything else filling up your mind. It's such a lovely space to be able to <laughs> trying to take the limelight. You are I'm trying to take the limelight. You're trying to peek at the phone. The phone falls over, that's because Robin's pecking at it. Um, so I was walking up here and I was busy thinking about childhood passions because my childhood passions, when I was young, those sort of innocent passions, I wanted to join the circus and be a trapeze artist. Yes, that was definitely something that I wanted to do. Um, <laughs> I did not end up doing that. I think I was only six then. My, the things that I loved when I was young was I loved being in the outdoors. I loved being physical. I loved gymnastics. Um, I loved uh, drama and acting and creating things. You know, putting together little shows and things like that. And it's a shame actually, but I, I, I got the impression, not from anyone in particular, but just from society, that that, that wasn't really... A viable and productive and worthwhile thing to do as a profession that it would be too selfish to be an actress or a movie director or to spend time in the outdoors um, which is not the case but as a young person that's what I thought I, I feel like I've come a full circle back to my childhood passions back to the outdoors back to creating putting together little shows <laughs> I don't know what it is about the camera, but it just, it just really loves it. It's so cute. That bird, it's going to pick my new DJI microphone. Oi, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> it's so funny. I wish I could show you. I need like, I need another I need another camera to show you what it's doing but of course as soon as I take the iPhone and turn it around it's gonna stop it's watching me on the screen oh it's hilarious oh sorry you can't see it I I'm watching it and you can't see it uh, anyway I'm waffling on 
But uh, that's just what I wanted to say was if you're wondering why I do what I do, like what what makes me want, want to make these videos, why I want to do it is because I think that the outdoors is so helpful for making me feel good and I just want to share that with other people and I want to be able to share that with as many people as I can and the best way to do that is through something like YouTube. It doesn't cost you guys anything and um, I can share something that hopefully you will really enjoy because that's how I even got the idea in the first place. I was having a time in my life when I wasn't sleeping very well and I thought to myself oh man you know I just wish that I was camping in a tent in the rain. That would just bring me such pleasure. I think I would just feel so calm. I really want to see the New Zealand bush and I really want to listen to like real rain on real tents in the real New Zealand bush because that, that's what I can relate to and that's what I recognize and so my body naturally feels calm when I'm doing that. And so I was like, okay, the sound of rain on a tent in the New Zealand bush and up popped Tony from AB Camping's video I think the only one he's ever made which is just rain sounds and I started listening to that every night to get myself to bed to, to fall asleep the sound of rain on a tent in the New Zealand bush and it was magic just magic for helping me to get to sleep and then from there I started watching all of his videos and there's a whole lot of other outdoors youtubers that I love to watch um, so on that note I just want to say a huge thank you to Tony for his really really nice thoughtful comments that he made about uh, myself and the channel in his last video um, thank you Tony that was really really cool and I'm not saying thank you for bringing in subscribers I'm saying thank you for what you said it was really really thoughtful and spot on um, and so true you know I want to bring something authentic that shows people some of the beautiful authentic lovely things that you can experience in the bush um, yeah Let's get going because uh, we have got more of a climb to do and um, then we need to look out for that track that's going to go up through the river. Enough sitting around. Dinner. If you've seen my other videos you've probably watched how hard it is for me to get my pack on this one this one is so light oh it's so nice it's a breeze it is little robin it's a breeze This is only 40 litres, a lot smaller, and I deliberately brought this pack because I knew I couldn't pack as much into it. So this is very minimalist. <laughs> what I'll do is when we get up to the top, I'll unpack everything and I'll show you what I take when I'm only taking essentials. Excuse me, I gotta go. See you later.
I think we're at the bush line. See the edge of the bush there? Times like this that I wish you were actually here because I just bet that the camera's not doing this justice. It's absolutely silent and it's absolutely beautiful. And you've got these sheer mountains just looming. looming over the top you can see there must have been some sort of landslide rock fall at some point now when I saw pictures of this lake see where that grassy area is in the middle over there that's usually a little island and I had an idea that I might swim out to it but it's actually so low which is why there's no water in the creek it is summer, so I totally understand why it's so low. I wonder if any of you, well there comes the wind, hopefully you can hear me. I wonder if you're any, any of you are fans of Claire from Wild Bear. She is just amazing. I just adore her. She's so cool. And she did this lovely video of her camping on a little island um, at a mountain lake. So uh, that seems like a fun thing to do, but I don't think it's as exciting to do it today because it's not an island. What is it? An isthmus? I don't know. I don't know what you'd call it, but not an island. Right, let's head down here and make our way under those trees and see what we can find. This is definitely it. This is perfect. <laughs> There's so many birds up in the trees. This is amazing. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to take my pack off and then I want to show you around a bit. I know I've just said it, but there's so many birds. It's just beautiful. I just love seeing the birds and hearing the birds because when there's a lot of birds, you know the ecosystem is doing well. So down there is the lake. What a beautiful view to have, hey? Down there's the lake. I think this is going to be where we camp. It's got lots of good spots for, well, you know, plenty of room for the tent and the tarp. So I think sort of down through there is where I'll camp. Hello. And then over here, someone has set up a fireplace. So that's awesome. And I'm quite excited to see this bunch of wood here. It might actually be dry enough for us to use. So I think we're going to have a fire tonight. Exciting. Exciting. So, okay, apart from my camera gear, which today I've got in a dry bag, uh, sometimes I bring 
a small camera bag or sort of a, a hard case just depends what I'm taking with me so apart from that um, and uh, the tripod is over there right now I've got the tripod usually so apart from that here's what I take with me I'm gonna put this here for now that's a bit of my dinner I've got my water which is almost finished there's plenty of water in the tarn I'm just gonna to need to boil it I think that is not mango juice I had that for um, a drink before I left in there is some wine for the evening And I chucked a couple of things in the top of my bag, hence why they're floating around. But tomorrow morning, I've got an early start. So I've brought coffee, but I'm just going to have one of these breakfast bars instead of actually making some breakfast. There was four in the pack and I decided to bring them all because it's always clever, no, prudent, to have extra food. You shouldn't just have what you need. So two or three of those are my emergency rations with my wine tonight I've got some cashews and a little bit of dessert which is my fruit and nut chocolate I am going to be having a freeze-dried meal re rehydrated rehydrated meal tonight which is quite unusual for me I don't do that very often but I do do it when I want to have an ultralight camp but because I really love my greens, I have brought a bag of spinach. It's so light, and as you saw, I just kind of clipped it onto the side of on top of my pack. And that's to just give me lots of healthy greens. Um, my rain jacket. Down jacket. clothing so in here is a pair of merino wool pants there is a wool hat a woolen hoodie a spare pair of socks that's what's in there my dry clothes dry and warm clothes My ground sheet to go under my tent which is actually just an old pack liner that I've cut here's my rehydrated meal so that's dinner I've only brought my kettle because I'm only heating water for the meal and not actually having to fry anything or cook anything um, I just need to make my coffee and I just need to heat water for my meal so I just brought the kettle rather than anything else um, as well as real coffee for the morning I've also got packet coffee which is pretty low in caffeine which I think I'm going to cook up quite soon uh, I might make I might put the tent up and then have a coffee and some herbal teas for tonight so it doesn't affect my sleep gas bottle and my gas cooker this is just a ridiculously large gas cooker I need to, to get myself um, something else um, I have got some newspaper in there and a lighter should I want to have a fire which I do want to so that's great in here are my random extra things I've got my headlamp My knife, I don't go anywhere without that. My first aid kit. A little towel, and I always take this little towel um, just in case I decided to go for a swim, which I was thinking about, but uh, I'm going to sound like a wuss, but it's just all that mushy, grassy goo that's, <laughs> that's growing just on the edge and at the bottom of the lake. I don't really like that so if I could have dived in there without touching the bottom 
would have definitely done it off the rocks. Um, but this is great also if there is going to be a rain, if it is going to rain, which it may still rain, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, it's always good to have something to dry gear off with. My teeny tiny piece of soap and my toothbrush. This is all I take in the way of toiletries when I'm doing an ultralight ca camp. There is no space for makeup and things. Bug spray, it is a must. Toilet paper is a must. And my EPIRB. Here's my luxury item today. Because it is quite heavy, this is my insulated mug that I'm going to use in the morning for my coffee so that it doesn't cool down. Tent poles. Ah, that's my fork in there. Tent pegs. And if I can get it out, I can't quite get to the tent yet, so I'll get that in a minute. DD Hammocks Ultralight um, Tarp, super, super light tarp, 3 by 2.9 meters. Um, a little inflating pillow, which is not my favorite thing, but it's super small and light, so it's better than something that's going to take up more room and be heavier. Um, I have got Exped Sunlight, Exped Sun Mat Ultralight medium and the little pump to pump up the mat. Sleeping bag liner. Urgh. Sleeping bag. Cedar Summit Trek 2. And my tent. Now I'm very happy about this. This little bag, got it from Kathmandu years and years ago. I don't even know if you can still get them, but I'm sure you can get them in lots of different outdoor stores all over the place. This is great. These little compression sacks are amazing because I might, I might even, um, when I get home, I'll show you the bag that this tent comes in. It comes in a bag that's about three, at least two maybe two and a half size, sizes bigger than this. But by using a compression sack, I'm able to compress it down really small, which means I save lots of room. So that is that. That is everything that I have with me on this camp. Now it is time to put what I don't need back into my pack and get my tent set up. And I'm using my little one person tent I only have two tents, um, camping gear, yes, there's always more, there's always more to get. I would love to have more, but that's what I have. I have two, I have a two person tent and a one person tent. And because Indy's not with me and I'm not camping with my family, I can take my one person, which is my Freedom Zempire Atom. So I'm going to get that set up. And usually I speed that up a lot, but um, I wondered if you might like to know a little bit about it as I set it up. So I might tell you a little bit of stuff as we go. Right, let's do it. So actually I think the best place to put the tent is going to be right here. It's kind of squished up against the trees, but there's quite a few tree roots and I'm going to regret that if I put my tent there. I would love it to be able to open that way just so that I can wake up in the morning and look straight out. That'll be so nice. So we'll just have to see how we go. Okay. Ground sheet's not gonna cover the whole tent, but I'm really not bothered because the tent's got a good floor on it. It's really waterproof. And the ground that we're on is nice and dry. doesn't look like it's going to accumulate water if it does rain, so I think we're pretty safe. So the things that I've considered here is I have considered the wind. 
So wh why I don't want to camp where the fireplace is, is because the wind could come up through the valley and right there. So just this little spot's a little bit more protected than over there. Okay, so I'll turn around that way. I've got pegs from two different tents here and I've actually got my pegs from um, my other tent, my other tent, um, my X-bed tent, because I really like these pegs. These ones, they kind of like a V shape. I don't know if you can see that. They're really light, really strong. The ones that come with this tent are these ones. They sort of have like a star shape. They're okay, but they're actually, they're heavy. They break more easily. I really like these light ones. So the nice thing with this tent is that when you put the fly on, it's no bigger than it is without the fly. So you can get a pretty good idea of how much room you need. Whereas some tents, you sort of, you do the, 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 the main part of the tent and then when you go to put the fly on, it's sticking out for miles and you're getting caught up in vegetation and things. This ground is so beautifully soft, it's amazing. My last camp, it was so rocky, it was really hard to get the pegs in. Now, even though I said it doesn't, it's not that much bigger than its base, it does have a vestibule, and I think I've put the tent too close to those trees. Do, to do, to do, what to do. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll just move this half. I think that's okay. No birds. I always wonder what they know or what they're trying to tell us. You know, there was a whole lot of birds when we first arrived and now it's quietened right down. Um, the only thing that's changed, it is getting later, but some clouds are moving in and maybe they sense that it might rain. Just one pole. One long pole here. Very easy. Somebody was asking in the comments what I thought of this tent, whether I'd recommend it. And one of the things I said is I haven't really tested it out in super strong wind, because that's the one thing that I'm not sure. It's not that I'm not sure it would handle it, it's just I don't know how it would handle it. 
something about the, the, the design of how these, how it's just got the single pole, something about that tells me it's not going to be fantastic in the wind. So one of these days I will try it out. But considering I had a windy camp last time, if you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. It was, it was lovely, I had a great time. It was raining and it was windy. But seeing as I had a windy camp last time, I'm actually really thrilled that it's not windy now. Because the wind kind of starts to get to you after a while when you're camping. It just makes everything harder. Ta-da, there you go. So that is the main part of the tent. Up already. Okay. Fly. Very easy, it's got a red and a black end. You put the red end into the red end and the black end into the black end. So it just clips in, and Velcros over the poles. The other nice thing is that the fly just clips into the, pe the pegs of the base. If you've got enough given it. <laughs> I might need to persuade it. Come on, you can do it. Normally you can guy this out, so I think this is gonna, would give it more strength in the wind, but I don't want to because I'm going to trip over this all the time. What I might do though, I could just, could just peg it down here. I don't know, don't really see the point. I don't think it's going to be very windy, and if it is, I will just pop out of the tent and peg it out. Right, this is the test. <laughs> Can I get the vestibule out there? The only problem is it's a little bit of a raised area. Oh look, that's going to be fine. I think if there was torrential rain, I might want to move the tent because it's a bit of a funny angle now. But I think we will survive. Voila, and there you go, the tent is up.
thinking about how this might work. Where to set myself up. Well, everybody, I hope that you're enjoying this trip. I certainly am. And it's only just begun, hasn't it? Cheers. Trust me. You don't want to look at me. You want to look at this view. I don't know why I put you over there. Come and have a look. Sit with me. What do you think? It's beautiful, isn't it? I'm not sure if you can see over the top of my head. Quite a few people have sent their regards to Indy, my dog. So if you haven't visited my channel before. Indy is my um, Collie Labrador cross and she's lovely and she just had a small little um, surgical operation so she's fine but her wound needs to heal properly so she hasn't been able to come out with me um, and that's why I chose this trip because she can't come out with me I might as well go somewhere where she's not allowed to come See if I can light it in two places. Don't think I'm going to need to light it in two places. That looks pretty good. Ooh, it's going to be smoky. So what's taking off there is the old man's beard and the, um, the little brown leaves. We'll just have to see whether it actually stays alight. Because that stuff burns off really quickly and then sometimes it just burns itself out. I hope I'm not going to be too close to the fire. I'm just spending so long setting up my silly seat. So in New Zealand we have very tight rules around dogs being in conservation areas. So we have conservation land, we have forest parks and we have national parks. And Indy has a permit to go into Department of Conservation permitted areas. But this is a national park that I'm in. And national parks have a blanket no dog rule. I don't know about hunting dogs. I think if you've got a hunting permit, 
Um, there is some different rules. There are some places in national parks I think you can go with a hunting dog. I love taking her on my trips. I really do. The only thing is, there are some areas I just love coming to and the national parks are outstanding. So there's going to be times that I leave her at home because I selfishly really want to get into the national parks and I want to show them to you as well. I want you to experience them because camping in the national parks is a different kettle of fish to the forest parks and conservation areas. Okay, so I carried it all the way up here, this bag of baby spinach. And what's going to happen is I'm going to put that inside this meal. So this is Mexican chili, grass-fed beef Mexican chili. Ooh, it smells beautiful. Now to their credit, Radix who've made this meal have included a whole lot of stuff. There's tomatoes, prebiotic vegetable blend with broccoli, carrots, spinach, pumpkin, split peas, avocado. Yeah, there's quite a bit of good stuff in there. So this is not me saying you haven't put enough good stuff in your meals. I just really like vegetable, like I like meals that are high in vegetable content. I'm letting that water boil quite a bit. The tarn's quite big and it's probably okay, but it is fairly still and animals do come down to drink from it. There was evidence of possum and deer prints. So I don't want to kid myself that it's completely clean. So I'm going to let it boil for three minutes and then pour it in. Not until I've stuffed all of the spinach in this bag. That's my mission. I'm going to leave the cooker going because what I want to do is boil up a whole lot of water. I actually thought, seeing as we would be walking up a, a river or creek bed, that there'd be a lot of water on the track to drink. And that wasn't the case. So I need to take water with me for the walk home tomorrow. And that means boiling it first and letting it cool down, so I'm going to do that now. I didn't think there were any sand flies here, but there actually are a few. So I'm going to put some uh, insect repellent on in a second. Right, somehow I need to close this bag to keep all the heat in. Oi, get off me. Actually, rather than put insect repellent on, I'm going to put my trousers on. This needs to sit for a while, I think five minutes or so. Let's have a look. Add the water, ooh, stir. Whoopsie, I didn't stir. Okay. Epic fail. Especially because it's got <laughs> like stuff that's going to stain me. I don't know what's more of an epic fail, that I didn't stir it or that I then spewed it all over me. At least I hadn't got changed already. That's a bonus, hey, let's look on the bright side. Right, okay, this time, this time I'm going to seal it properly. A 
and not turn it upside down without rolling it first. Right, that meal is going to sit there for a while while I get myself cleaned up. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. What a mess. I've decided to change my view for dinner. It's so quiet and still down here. I need to find a little place to sit. Hmm. <sighs> I'm spoiled for choice because the view that way is beautiful and the view this way is beautiful. But I did come specially for this lake, so I thought I should sit out here and have my dinner. In case you're wondering where this is, I'm probably not going to say actually. <laughs> if you're somebody that likes to um, go hiking, tramping, you'll understand that finding a spot where there's nobody else is really, really special. And a lot of go effort goes into finding spots. And when you do, you kind of just want to keep it to yourself. The truth is, if you are a New Zealander and you like tramping, you will figure out where this is. You know I'm in the Lewis Pass. You know that it's not far from a road and they had to cross a river to get to the start of the track and it was a couple of hours straight uphill. You'll figure it out. There's only probably three places it could be. It's actually quite fun. It's quite fun to figure things out. I was... Um, I had a comment from somebody who laughed and um, at one of the things that I'd said about um, playing a bit of a game to try and guess another YouTuber's um, camping spots just based on, you know, where the sun was setting and the, um, the different mountains I could see in the background and things like that. And um, she was saying, oh, I do that too. And those people that are interested to know where this place is will figure it out. And those people who aren't, who, those people who are overseas and, you know, this is just another spot in New Zealand. You don't plan to come here anytime soon. Um, you really don't care where it is as long as you're with me having a nice um, camping experience. So, yeah, I'm going to keep this one on the down low and you will figure it out if you want to. Mmm, that's nice. I could hear the frogs down by the lake. I've got almost 500 mils of water. I'm going to boil up some more just to make sure I've got a whole lot for my walk back down tomorrow. And also going to go and fill up my kettle so that I've got water for my coffee in the morning. It's just such a beautiful still night. There was a little bit of rain forecast and a little bit of wind and we didn't actually get either of those things. 
just lovely. I'm not going to bother with the tarp. Um, my tent's really nice and waterproof, so if it does rain in the night, that's fine. It could rain heavily and I wouldn't mind. This was such a cool camp. I really loved it. It was really relaxing because everything just worked out. It was a nice, easy place to camp. The water source was near. There was uh, no possums trying to visit me in the night. Uh, nothing went wrong with my gear. You know what I have realized? <laughs> I think I knew this. When the weather is fine, it's so much easier. <laughs> I was, however, intending to camp in the rain because there was supposed to be rain between 4 p.m. and about 7 or 8 p.m. last night. Um, you know me, I love camping in the rain, but this was so easy. No wet gear, super, super easy. Right, so next time, next time I go out, I really hope, fingers crossed, that I can have Indy with me. And I hope we get a nice rainy camp again because um, that's what I really enjoy. Um, if you want to know when that video comes out, you're going to need to be subscribed. So if you would like to, please subscribe. And I would love to hear from you as well. As you know, I love, I love the comments. And um, so uh, drop a note and say hi. Until next time, I will see you guys out there. Bye.